Hi guys, this is Chris of Les. Another video that I've been made possible by the fine people at IMD. They did actually uh, put a computer at my disposition to render those videos. Today, we are going to look into how do I render my stuff from Substance Matter into Redshift and as actually into Arnold. Um, everybody have a way of doing it. Some are right, some are wrong. I'm going to show you my way. I don't say it's the right way. I don't say it's the wrong way, but it's a way that works for me. I'm going to show you how to do it manually in the first time because it is very important to understand what any tool is doing in the background if you use an automatic tool to transfer your shader it's very important to be able to look into a shader and uh, understand if something is not set properly so to do this i have um, a model that i've been put at my disposition by el maestro himself paolo parente from the dust studio here I will invite you to have a look at his web page. This is a dust game. It's actually a board game, something very similar like um, Warmer 40k for people that uh, play it. It's just a, world war, a weird World War II game with a lot of uh, giant walker monkeys and stuff, zombies. It's actually quite cool. Anyway, um, this model has been sculpted by Gaël Goumont, which is one of the sculptors from the studio and uh, I got access to the STL uh, print data, meaning the geometry was not the best in the world, not that Gale did a bad job, it's just that it's have been decimated and optimized for printing. Um, the interesting fact with this model is I did have to paint it like a real world miniature. I could not create any mask, I could not do anything. This is actually one watertight piece of geometry. So. I'm then, as I said before, I'm going to show you how to export those textures, but most importantly, how to use them in Redshift. So file, export texture. I'm not going to do anything special right now. PBM Metal Rough. I'm not using the Redshift preset because that's an old one and it is not up to date. So I'm going to export my texture at uh, 240. I could export at 4K, but it's fine for now. And I'm going to say, where do I export them? G temp texture Gregor video export. It's going to export those texture. Perfect. And I will then go into Maya and check my geometry. I have a geometry here. I'm going to move it a little bit. Something like that. Um, what am I going to do first? Because I'm going to render with redshift, I'm going to create a light. Redshift light. Redshift dome light, and then I'm going to grab an IBL here somewhere. Perfect, open. Then I'm also going to make sure that I'm rendering with the GI here. Good force, red force, command, perfect. I'm going to tell him to render at 1K and do a quick test render. Redshift render view. That's the test from before. But this is actually where we want to go. So, but we are not there right now, right? Because right now, what we're going to get is the monkey with nothing, and you don't like to be called a monkey. It's an app. So, waiting to get into memory. Perfect. It is looking atrocious, but it is normal because it is not a redshift shader. Lighting, shading, assign material, blend. The blin, I'm going to say it's actually a redshift material. And I'm going to make sure that the material have been assigned to the gray. So here and here. Perfect. So as you can see, it's already looking quite decent. But now I need to assign those textures. The question is, can I use an automatic tool? Yes, I'm going to show you what tool I use, where to get it, and what the tool do. But before you do that, again, and I know I repeat myself quite a lot, it's coming from teaching, you need to understand what the tool is doing. You need to understand why those textures plug there and if something look wrong. So that's why I'm going to come here in color and grab my diffuse. I'm going to open. there and I keep it as sRGB you see everything is very shiny right now but we don't care about that then I go down the line and I look at my roughness I know I need 
to plug my roughness map in there. Going to grab roughness. We are good. No, we are not good actually. You see, I wanted to trick you. You see the sRGB here? Every grayscale has to be a raw color profile. That's very important. So I come here, GGX, because it's a closest um, shading system or shading model that is closer to Painter. Then I'm going to make sure I turn on metalness here, then plug my metallic texture. I don't change anything at the on the reflectivity. I don't have to. And I get the metalness, my roughness, metallic. Where's my metallic? Okay. It's already looking much better and I make it raw. Now, next is going to be my scattering. I'm going to just look at the amount of scattering here, grab another map, drop it, grab it from there, scattering, it's very quiet, raw. Nothing too crazy, then go down the line. Sorry, I said go down the line and I go to where do I go? General, we're here. Let's close that one. The overall, we want a bump. Then I'm going to grab a map. And I'm going to make sure the map is wrong and something is wrong right there i don't know what it is i must have plugged something in the wrong tangent space normal and we should be good to go we wait a little bit transfer preparing scene and now we are there and then we're going to say one perfect so so far so good not bad fairly happy with the result and it's looking very, very close to what I have in Painter. Right now in Painter, if I go in and turn off all the gimmicky stuff, post process, color profile, um, what else do we have? Um, we should be good actually. We might want to turn the environment exposure a little bit and we should be fairly close to what we are there. Perfect. So that's a way of doing it. And it is very important to know how to do it. The, the issue though is that if you have a model that have like, I don't know, seven, eight material, it's very, very painful to go in and do it. That's what I used to do, right? But I'm going to show you a tool that I love to use. So I will invite you to go to Gumroad and look at Xolo Studio. So, so long, I can I can pronounce it anyway. You're going to look for Substance Painter Live Link. Those are the best 20 bucks I did spend in the last two years at the bare minimum. Um, it is really good. What happened with that tool is it's allow you to send whatever you have in Painter toward Marmoset, Cinema 4D, 3D Max, Maya, Modo, Blender, Udini, and I probably forget some. It is a very, very, very handful tool. I'm going to show you how powerful it is. So I'm going to kill everything in my Maya. Like I have nothing in my Maya, right? I'm going to go back to Painter. Now I'm going to tell Painter here, use my tool, that little edge arc sign here. And I'm going to say, I want you, they actually changed the name. It used to be called edge arc, now it's called live link. I'm going to tell him, go to Maya. See, I have the choice here. I'm going to go to Maya. I'm going to tell it render for redshift, going to tell him where to drop the, the texture, the resolution, the, the object. First, I'm going to send the mesh, going back to Maya. Let's see if it's work. I forgot to start the server. Server is already listening, perfect.
So you see, it asks me if I want to obtain my object. I do. And it's opening. In the meantime, okay, the monkey is there. It's great. In the meantime, I'm going to open that. Move my upper shed there. I'm going to kill every material that was there. Because when I did kill stuff, I should have closed the window. So there's only a geometry there. There's no material, right? So now I can come here and I can say, you know what? Here, I want you to send all my material. Oh, sorry, I did lose the window here. And I'm going to say send all. Then what's going to happen? It's in Painter. I'm going to open my, my view. Let's do that. And then let's do this one. It's going to tell me what's going to be exported and where. In Maya now, I have the shader here. And I can drop it there. Now I can come and create a light. Example, a dome light again. And example, another shutter. An IBL again, the same. Let's keep it easy. Redshift, redshift render view. And let's see what we have. We should have exactly the same. And the shutter should have been completely created by the tool automatically. Come here. Move it there and look at that. Here, let's move that here. And as you can see, my shadow is there. My map are already plugged. But it is very important, as I mentioned before, that you know what to look for just in case something go wrong. You want to know exactly what's going on here. Metallic raw, base color sRGB, subsurface raw, and roughness raw. Okay, good. Now you're going to tell me, but it's only only one piece of geo. It would have been easy to do it by hand. Yes, but keep in mind that you could have a lot of texture. I'm going to show you. I'm going to do an Arnold render now. So in Painter, I have my Tesla hot rod. And if we look here, we realize there is a lot of material, probably like, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 12 material that I would have to rebuild by end. And uh, I did not do any Arnold Painter for, to Arnold for a long time, meaning I kind of remember where to plug those maps, but I don't have time for that right now. That's why I'm going to say we're going to use a tool. Perfect here. In Maya, we make sure that everything is a new file, a new scene. Then we are going to tell Maya. Um, to keep listening, it's going to cry and tell me like, oh, it's already listening, but I just want you, see, if you stop the server, that's what it is. If you stop from the, from scratch, start server, it's going to say starver started listening. Perfect, painter, I come here and I'm going to be like file, nothing actually, I'm going to come here and say, I want to export to Maya, I want to export to Arnold, and I keep my map at 248, my object is a wavefront object, and I'm going to send my mesh. Then I go to Maya and I wait for it to pop it. And in Maya, I now have my mesh. So I look at those material. And I realize those material have nothing in there, right? Nothing, no texture, nothing. Those are not even, they are just plain Lambert material. Going back to Painter, now I can tell it I want you to send all those material. And I'm going to say send all. It's going to take a little bit of time. That's why I'm going to pause the video. It's not taking a bit of time because the computer is slow. It's not taking a bit of time because the tool is slow. It's just taking a lot of time because there is a lot of material. Okay. Let's see. Send all. I'm going to pause the video. So, and now in Maya, 
I can see that I have my new Matea car paint example. It's an I standard Matea AI, and I'm going to reassign there where they belong. I'm not going to look at anything. I'm going to be a uh, redshift steer. Uh, it's tire. It's going to be uh, this one. Then car paint. It's going to be this one. Perfect. Then we have chassis, select object with material. It's going to be this one and so on and so on. Just reassigning the material, you know, it's a lot quicker than if I did have to create those material by end. So what I'm going to do now is going to, I'm going to slowly reassign those materials. It's going to take me like 30 seconds, but it's very more interesting than to watch uh, paint dry. That's why I'm going to pause the video and come back as soon as I did it. And now I'm back, I'm going to delete all the material that I don't need. Perfect. I'm going to come into Arnold, create a light, probably a, a dome light for now. It's going to be good enough. And then drop a texture in there. Going to be, um, what can I drop there? Um, something, yep, the same, why not? Yeah. Um, and now I'm going to say, uh, do me a nice render. Redshift, Redshift, rend oh, no, sorry, Arnold. Open Arnold Render View, and I'm going to drop it there. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the those Ryzen CPU are no joke. Look at that, look at the amount of core burning right now. It's crazy, it's amazing. Uh, let me, uh, first, I'm, I wanted to show you the tool, right? The tool is really cool. It's all my texture got applied there with no no work. But uh, what I really, really, really enjoy, I don't know, you guys know that it's sponsored by MD, right? But at the end of the day, I'm an artist, right? And for me, what's really important is what I can do with that stuff. Look at that. Let's see if I can get a way to show you the core are running right now. Let's see if I can move that here, uh, do something like that, and then move at that. It's crazy. It's like, boom, I'm feeling like a kid in a candy store every time I render with Arnold, which is actually quite funny because um, I really love Redshift. Uh, I'm a Redshift guy, right? But since uh, I went back into a CPU for rendering, I kind of really, really, really uh, enjoy Arnold, especially on the two and shadow from Arnold. I'm going to do a video about it because a lot of people are asking, uh, how do I do it? And I'm going to give you another video. Again, one sponsored by AMD. Thank you, AMD. Um, I'm not saying I'm going to go back to Arnold and dump Redshift but because I like GPU rendering, but it is very, very powerful and it really makes you like enjoy again doing CPU rendering. Look at the speed. It's like it's it's fast anyway um i hope you did really enjoy this video there's more coming down the pipe stay tuned um there's one thing i wanted you to take out of this uh, video very important it is not that i'm working with a very fast cpu but that's okay it's part of yes the ryzen cpu are fast but what i wanted you guys to take out of this video is following it is good to use a tool that do everything for you. I, I enjoy it all the time. The tool is great. Uh, if you have 20 bucks to spend, go grab it. It is really good. But it's also very important to understand what the tool is doing behind the scene, meaning especially for me, because Redshift is my main render, where do those maps go get plugged and what do they do? Okay, I wish you a good day and I see you next time.